Insider Elliot Friedman said multiple things about the Montreal Canadiens, including he believes there will be extensions coming for Slav and Gouli. Plus, he truly believes the Montreal Canadiens are going to make a, quote, big swing up front. We have to break all of that down. Plus, a note on the Laval Rocket, and while they did miss the playoffs this year, unfortunately, the last game against Belleville showed a little shining star, something we really want to highlight. All of that coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. Jesse, we're going to get straight into it. And we got to talk about Laval. Now, it's sad. It's very sad because as we all knew, they had this two games and two nights versus the Belleville Senators. There is this game Saturday, April 20th. Not sure if you're watching this before, after the game, whatever. It is unfortunate that no matter what, the game Friday eliminated Laval from the playoffs. They needed to get two regulation wins against Belleville. The game went to overtime and Laval ended up losing anyway. But once it went to overtime, it was over. But Jesse, there was a nice shining light. And we all know there have been some great prospect developments for Laval this year. Notably Logan Mayu, Joshua Wa, that kind of stuff. But Luke Tuck played his first game in this do-or-die game, basically, for Laval. And according to Anthony Marcotte, he said in his first game, Luke Tuck was one of the best players on the Rocket. And this sentiment was, well, it was reflected pretty much everywhere. It was reflected if you watched any of the game as well. He was extremely solid along the boards, and he made some, had some nice big checks. And Luke Tuck is a big guy, Jesse. He kind of got that more power forward type of style, but he also is a solid playmaker as well. His goal scoring is not his top attribute, but he really feels like a winning hockey player. And despite Laval's you know, season not technically being over in that game, their playoff aspirations were over. This was a nice little bright spot. Yeah, really big for him, right? And obviously a nice surprise. We're not sure sometimes what you're getting, but you know that the you know NHL pedigree is there. Obviously his brother, very successful NHL player as well. And they're often very good bets. You know, we've seen lots of those brother combinations in the league. We've seen it's the reason why we drafted a Jack guy recently. Is we know sometimes the apples don't fall like far from the tree, right? But he plays that kind of like NHL type of game, mm -hmm. which makes me think that there is a possibility he can get on that fourth, you know, dare I say even third line in the future, right? A big guy. We know how important winning puck battles in. I think after a year of seeing Slaff and, really be able to do this we've all realized really been you know reminded how important this is just a fundamental part of the game to possess the puck and so much of it is of the game is played just along those boards that physical play again translates so well to playoffs you know you have to feel like man that's a guy that's gonna really love playing with Florian Jackai as well in Laval next year oh man that'll be that'll be nasty right but but you're very right that's a great point like making it to the NHL now you have to have NHL level skill and skating to make it there like no matter what and tuck his skating is not like his top thing but he's not bad right he's not a bad skater um he can very well fit in but winning those board battles and laying the body a lot of these guys when those are their best attributes they kind of turn into almost exclusively that at the nhl level but that's not necessarily a bad thing if he can put together his playmaking his goal scoring even a little bit more and prove he can be like a near point per game player in the ahl or maybe even not that maybe like that kind of 40 point 50 game like 0.8 point per game thing Along with those board battles and stuff, I don't think it's that crazy to say that in a couple of years you're seeing, maybe even a year or two, seeing Luke Tuck maybe get a shot with the Canadians. So some really impressive things we saw from him. Again, tiny sample size, but we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Luke Tuck. Do you think he ever has Montreal Canadiens upside? I think we'll need to see a bigger sample next year, but I'm excited to see what he'll be able to bring to the table. Um, but Jesse, speaking of the future, there's, we got to talk about Slavkovsky. Now, Elliot Friedman... Jeff Merrick, they talked a bit about the Montreal Canadiens on 32 Thoughts podcast, but Elliot, as always, did a written version of it too, and in his 32nd thought, there's actually more than 32, I think, in this article, he said this, if we've done enough Arizona, let's skip to Montreal. He said, no one's demanding playoffs, but it's time to get the meaningful games late in the season. we got to get to that stage. He said, Slaff and Montembeau were big wins. And the first thing we're going to focus on is him saying, I would expect the Canadians to try and extend both Slavkovsky and Caden Gooley. Now, we kind of know this is coming. This is not like a surprise, but it's good to hear from Elliot Freeman that he feels like Montreal is going to be going for that. And in a minute, we're going to talk about the other thing he said, Jesse, but Slav and Gooley, these are key points to the future. And Slav himself, hey, he, he wants to get to that meaningful game stage too i would like to experience the playoffs in montreal that's why i play here that's what slaff said and even suzuki chipped in he said once we got together he really took off with his confidence he's amazing he just needed a confidence boost i told arpin he's going to be a top five winger in the league we'll get him there a Slavkovsky extension, while Gouli too, th this is something huge that's coming for the montreal canadians jesse and it wouldn't surprise me to see them overpay for what some people are saying just because of his attitude just because of his growth and see him get a massive eight-year deal this offseason yeah, it just makes sense to really lock them up, right? Two really core pieces of our of our future kind of going ahead, right? So 
be able to get this bargains type of deal, right? And he seemed like to really fit the culture of this team. And I would say that both of them have this leadership type of attributes, all the same for being so young, which is obviously that much more of a reason why you want them. They just fit this team so well. They both brought such amazing things. I know you're happy to hear this with your boy, Gooley, yes. for sure. But Josh, I want to get your thoughts. Like, when we're talking about core pieces on the Montreal Canadiens, mm-hmm. we got Uri Slavkovsky. We got, I think, Kaden Gooley now with this extension is part of that conversation. What other players are you putting in there? Oh, boy. That's a great question. Now, the first one that comes to mind is, like, I think of Hudson. I think of Reinbacher. Like, immediately that pairing springs to mind. Another guy yeah. that pops up in my head is Joshua Roy. And I don't know what they're going to sign him for because they got him for another couple of years and stuff. But he just feels like that kind of guy, the Quebec boy. He's going to be around for a while in that middle six, just kind of hanging around. But when we're talking about this court for the future, I mean, Slav is so young. Guli is so young. These guys are going to get these long-term extensions. I think the next one up that we could see a true long, big extension, I think is Kirby Doc. Because his contract, like, I think we got another two years and he, but I think no matter what happens at the end of that, the Habs are going to try and keep him around for the long haul. But it's hard to say. I feel like I want to say everyone, right, Jesse? I feel like there's no wrong answer there. I think we'll see it for Hudson, for Reinbacher, for Doc, for whoever it might be, because I, I, maybe not everyone can stay. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, but I think there are just too many guys to have to pick and choose in my mind. We can't forget about Doc, and I would agree with everybody you name, but obviously I put Jack on into oh, that yes, conversation. I course. think they want to be part of, of that. course. But then they've made those commitments to also to Suzuki, to Caulfield. I think that almost goes without saying. But those kind of players, and then if Newhook, he's kind of on that borderline. Like, he can be a part of this. Kent Hughes wants him to be a part of it. The way he's playing, he's going to kind of get into that conversation, right? What's so nice when you have this big pool of players is you have this identity. You're not just having this turnover every year, you know? This is the type of team we have. This is the type of culture. Obviously, that familiarity of playing with each other, developing that chemistry further and further, being such a young team. So all amazing developments as we continue to put the puzzle pieces together. Yeah, Jack has a great shout. He actually needs a contract this offseason too. So I'm not sure if they're going to offer him a long, long-term one. We'll wait and see, but I think he will get something. Um, but to transition a bit from uh, these contract extensions, which I'm sure are going to come, it's going to be very exciting when it happens. I want to talk about the other thing Friedman said here. If you look at the end of the quote, The Canadians have a lot of young defensemen, so they'll see what's out there for trade, I'm sure. He said, quote, I think they'll also weigh big swing up front. Now, Freeman saying that, like, you know, we we kind of figure something's going to happen. We weren't sure whether it was going to come this offseason, maybe next offseason. I know Hughes and Gorton teased something, well, maybe not something huge. They said it's a huge summer for them. Of course it is. This is a big summer. It's a turning point. But to hear from Freeman, hey, you know, he's he's most of the time right, thinking, hey, I think they're going to make a big swing up front. This could be the offseason for it, Jesse. We have so many defensemen, so many great prospects, so many great assets with the picks. We got that Calgary pick. We have our Winnipeg pick this year. The Calgary pick's probably going to convey next year. We have a bunch of seconds and thirds. This could be the time to get that big time offer. And I know we look at the free agency pool and stuff, but there's a lot of young guys too. Like you never know who's going to be available for trade, but to hear this from Freeman say, I think a big swing might be coming this off season. I, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's just him speculating. It probably is, but it still has me very, very excited. Yeah. We're hearing all sorts of crazy rumors right now. Steven Stamko is his name's getting thrown on. Yeah. He's a free agent this summer. I will say, however, I feel like a trade is more likely. Doesn't that seem like something Kent would more do, this type of situation? I think the free agent, if we still need to address it next summer, that's when we kind of do it. But that's where you need to pay a little bit more. But it's in the trade that Kent, I think, can really identify the player that he wants and really kind of finesse, put all of his kind of his talents at work there, right? So I think when Elliot Friedman is talking about this big swing, I mean, all the writing's on the wall. Like Jeff Gordon's pointing at it. He's saying if this trade comes up, we're going to take it, right? You know, you just have to feel like, okay, maybe that's more of the option, maybe doing the free agent next summer, but you have to feel like it's really the time where we want to start really, you know, taking it up to another gear and we want to be much, much more competitive next year. It all depends who's available. I'm seeing some Habs fans saying, let's sign Sam Reinhardt. That scares the crap out of me. I mean, he's, if you grade his career, like, on, like based on his averages, he's well like a standard deviation above his normal career uh, averages right now playing with someone like Barkov down in Florida. I wouldn't want that. Maybe uh, Jonathan Marsh is so. You never know. But again, he's older. He's in his mid-30s. And so, you know, you, you got these risks. But you still need talented players to get through a rebuild, even if they're not there for that championship window maybe three years down the line. Maybe you sign a two- or three-year deal for someone. Of course, people saying Crosby, you know, whatever. But still, 
something is going to end up happening. And hey, like we said, even veterans up front, excuse me, if you get them for the right deal, for the right term, they can serve as very good mentors. And that kind of thing, that locker room presence, that mentorship to young guys is incredibly valuable. We're seeing it this season with a guy like David Savard, who they're pairing with a lot of the young defensemen. That kind of stuff off ice means so, so much for their development. But what do you guys think? A big swing up front, is it going to be a trade? Are they going to try and sign one of these veteran free agents, good scores to a small deal? We'd love to hear your speculation down below because we could go pretty much any direction. But for now, that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're pushing towards 12K subs, and we really appreciate all the support. I'm Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.